afternoon and welcome to the cockpit of the Swamp Duck. It's Wednesday the 29th of January 2020 and I've come back over to the boat this afternoon to carry on with some of the safety checks that I started in preparation for the boat safety certificate inspection later on in the year. When I first started doing this, I went on to the uh, Boat Safety Scheme website and on there you can download a checklist for public use and it runs to about five or six pages or so and I found that was quite useful so I went through all of that and I've ticked off and highlighted the, the bits that were I felt were uh, pertinent to this um, boat and some of the things that I knew that I needed to do. You can also um, download from that site the examiner's instructions. Now they run for lots and lots of pages so I didn't want to print the entire lot but even so um, just picking the ones that were relevant to the, to this boat there were still many many pages so I've have printed them off and gone through them carefully and again highlighted things that I think uh, need attention I'm going to just go through the electrical work that I think is almost completed now there's very little for me to, to have to do with that I'm quite happy with what I've done and hopefully that will be acceptable. Okay so picking up on the wording in the document it says all batteries must be incapable of movement and I think I've now achieved that by building a cradle. All metal parts of battery terminals or connection must be insulated or protected. Locker lids will not be removed for any purpose other than gaining access to the batteries. And again I think I've now achieved that by um, making sure there's nothing else kept in this battery compartment other than the batteries. And then I picked up on this bit, the battery cable for battery to master switch, battery to battery must be approximately 25 millimeters squared. So here are my two leisure batteries and even if I try and put a reasonable amount of force on them they don't move, they don't go anywhere. So I'm quite happy that they have succeeded in doing that. And then with the um, cables, um, I bought proper battery cables from a well-known store and made sure that I've kept the original labels on them. So if there's any argument, I didn't make these up. They were supplied to me by a reputable, reputable uh, company and there they are there, uh, positive battery cables and they're the same um, thickness as the original cables on the starter battery which passed last time so just hoping that uh, again that will be acceptable I'm picking up on a couple more things from all these notes. Crocodile type clips are not acceptable as battery connections, so that's why they've they've all now gone. Check that any electrical circuits bypassing the battery isolator for the presence of a fuse. So this is things like where I put in the bilge pump, I've added a fuse. And also I have a couple of solar panels on the roof and they too have now got fuses on them that they didn't have before. And just to be uh, completely thorough, I've added a few labels to the various switches around the boat so that it's obvious what they're for and how they operate. So this one, for example, um, goes to the leisure batteries and it's from the solar maintainer and it's the isolator switch for that and uh, it has to be off when the leisure batteries are in use and off when both batteries 
the uh, are, are in use. Okay, so I think that's enough about uh, electrics for, for the time being. The next thing to uh, move on to is uh, fuel and the, the engine and everything that goes with supplying the fuel to the engine. Okay, and the bit that I pulled up for this is are all portable petrol tanks stored when not in use to ensure that any leaking fuel or escaping vapour will not enter the interior of the vessel. That's a bit of a difficult one on this boat because the petrol tank is stored here on the deck and um, the pipe goes through the opening into the uh, engine compartment which is obviously it's an outboard engine so it goes straight to that on the outside and the cutoff for the engine is at the back of the engine and it's labelled on the engine. And this is exactly as it was the last time that it uh, passed. However, I did think that I would add a couple of things and I'm still working on it really because I haven't quite found the right product yet but my intention was to make sure that the tank was sitting inside something else so that if it did develop a leak it wouldn't go into the boat itself it would go into this um, container so, so far I've only come up with a plastic one but I'm going to see if I can find a bit more of a heavy duty thing or even a metal one and then the other thing was that I've secured it by putting these pieces of wood on the deck so that it doesn't uh, move around then another piece of information and a question is are all spare petrol containers stored to ensure that any leaking fuel or vapour will not enter the interior of the vessel? So in order to comply with that, I've made sure that the uh, 5 litre spare petrol is here, where it can drain through that hole there, the same as the bilge, into the uh, river or canal. And obviously it's on the outside of the boat so that any vapours will go off into the atmosphere and not into the boat. Okay then another issue is that of a uh, means of escape. Uh, according to the rules and regulations it says each accommodation space must have at least two means of escape. The opening must accommodate a 38 centimetre diameter circle so apart from the door to the cuddy the only other way of escape will be through the window and it's going to have to be the front window because it has the biggest space and it will be easy to stand on the seat here and just launch yourself through that and it, it is also it is a plastic window so it does say about having a, a means to open the window push the window open and, and i think probably it's going to be an elbow or a foot or even make use of the table but that certainly would push out it's only held in by a rubber seal and uh, the idea is to have that labeled so that if anybody's on the boat who's not familiar with it they'll know where it is so i've done that as a temporary measure but i'm going to see if i can find a proper um, emergency uh, exit sign just to put up here just to keep uh, Mr Inspector happy. Thankfully when the window was put in, if I measure it, it actually measures exactly 38 centimetres. So that space there, and obviously it's wider there, would be perfectly adequate to fulfil this uh, um, need of escape. And on similar lines to that, are the correct number of portable fire extinguishers provided? And for a boat of under 7 metres, you need two. So there are two already on the boat. 
and if the vessel has permanent cooking facilities is a fire blanket provided. So there is the permanent cooking facility and there is the fire blanket and underneath it is a fire extinguisher and there is the second fire extinguisher so again I think that's covered. And now an issue that I've wrestled with for some time and that is the housing of the gas cylinders can see that there's not very much space at the back of the boat there and originally the gas cylinder was where the petrol can was but that prevented me from lifting the engine so if we got anything fouled up on the engine I had to very precariously balance it uh, on a piece of wood which wasn't at all safe but uh, it's it much better now that I can tip the engine and uh, click it in place that meant relocating the cylinders so they're now in the baskets on the back here and the exact words say cylinder housings may be used in open locations and located on the exterior of the vessel the other thing about that is are all, all hoses not exceeding one millimeter in length so there is only one hose and it's that one and I've measured it and it's less than a meter in length and it must be marked to BSEN16436 or BS3212 I renewed this pipe work only recently and it has the correct mark in there BS3212 and the date of manufacture because they only last probably for about four or five years. Another thing to check is are all LPG appliances burners in good condition and delivering a proper flame. So I've just lit that and you can see it's mainly blue so it looks okay which is good news because I can put the kettle on and make a cup of tea. And then another issue to address is ventilation and the fixed vents. Fixed vents are the ones that uh, are always open and can't be closed. So on the cuddy door there are two. The back and front. Moving into the cuddy, there's one at the side here above the cooker which goes straight to the outside of the boat and then there's another one on the toilet door which then goes to one again on the outside wall of the toilet so the air can flow right through and there's also another one here which I put in which isn't a fixed vent because it can be closed and it does provide some more ventilation and then on the front deck there is some more fixed ventilation which has all been cleaned out and is working properly and that uh, provides ventilation to the under deck part here which is good news because if I'm using any of these UCO lamps then there's ventilation and in fact a, a little flow effect. One of the first things I fitted on the boat when I took it on was to fit one of these a carbon monoxide detector and I also have a standard fire detector. So I think I've got those bits well covered. Having read all those uh, sheets of paper, I don't really think there's anything much more that I need to uh, do uh, in order to get this boat through its safety certificate. I think it's important, it's not just about uh, passing a test, but it's making sure that the boat 
is safe at all times. If you look down at the list of channels that I follow on my um, YouTube page, you'll see that um, I look at um, life in a nutshell. Two lovely people who were narrowboaters who then went in, out to Panama and uh, bought a yacht and they sailed from Panama all the way to Australia and had a fantastic adventure on the way and then when they got to Australia their plan was to go all the way around the coast of Australia which they started to do and then they had a few engine problems so they had to return and get um, a gearbox fixed and I was just looking on face on their Facebook page recently um, just before Christmas um, they were out there doing some repairs and Magnus had gone to the boat and I think he was preparing himself a cup of tea or something like that went out on the deck and the next minute boom the boat exploded fortunately he wasn't badly injured he had burnt himself I believe at the boat it was a bit of a mess inside and you couldn't help but feel so sad for them they put such a lot of effort and work into it and when you think where they'd been and the adventures they had for it to sort of go up like that just in an instant so we do have to be careful on the boat in a very confined space and you know if you've got gas appliances and electrical appliances and you've got petrol the, the uh, potential is there for it to be a bit of a disaster so I don't want to treat it lightly at all so anyway hope you've um, gained something from this if you want to know more about the boat safety scheme then look on the internet and go through the website and I'm sure there are things on there that are more relevant to your boat than mine so thank you for watching and please if you've uh, gained anything from this and you want to look at further videos please click the subscribe button which you'll see in the corner of the screen and uh, if you want to be notified when I put another vlog on then press the, the bell and uh, you'll be notified by YouTube. So thank you for watching, see you again soon.